This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And oh my goodness, I rejoice to be with you here this morning. He is risen. He is risen and we are here to celebrate it. Praise God. Uh, I praise God to be with you here in the folks who are here in the, in the sanctuary in person. Those of you who are with us online, my name is Tommy Prudhomme. I'm the pastor here at Salado United Methodist Church. And again, I am so happy to be worshiping here with y'all this morning. Uh, just a few announcements before we continue on with our worship. Uh, first, I want to let you know that coming up on April 14th, uh, we're going to have a, a music recital. And uh, it's going to be kind of like what you just heard. Uh, maybe not exactly like it, but I mean the same kind of quality and amazingness. This is going to be an opportunity for us to raise some funds for our music program here at the church. So it's going to be April 14th, Sunday at 6 p.m. All of you are invited uh, to attend, and you're invited to let other folks know about it as well. Uh, and then also on, starting on April 14th, uh, we're going to be, I'm, I'm going to put in a little plug for uh, our next sermon series. So it's not this coming Sunday, but it's the Sunday after that. Pretty much this whole year so far, we've been talking theology. We've been talking about who God is, who we are as God's children, how we relate to God. Starting uh, on the 14th, we're going to be talking a little bit more practical about how we live as God's children in this world that seems to be going faster and faster and faster and faster. And so the name of the series is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, and it, it that the, the sermons in that series may be some of the most important things you hear uh, maybe in your whole life, certainly this year. And so I, I definitely invite you to be here for that, the ruthless elimination of hurry. 
And with that, let us go now to God in prayer. Loving God, almighty God, creator God, sustainer God, and redeemer God, you have saved us. We're here this morning to celebrate the salvation that has come to us through your son Jesus. You've called us into this place as your children. We ask now as we seek to express our thanksgiving and praise for the blessings that you've given to us, that you give us your spirit, that you give us the ability to raise up to you our voices in praise and song. And we ask this in the name of your Son, the one you sent to save us, the one whose resurrection we celebrate this morning, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and a happy Easter. Uh, my name is Terry Livingston. I'm the director of music uh, here at Slato UMC. I'm so happy to see you all this morning. Will you please stand as we uh, call in singing He Lives Together. <laughs> I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever foes may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. With me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see. Though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy past. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, the Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. Above all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Thank you for singing with me. Will you remain standing and join me in our affirmation of faith this morning? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and happy Easter to everyone. My name is Paul Corder. I'm the director of student ministries here at Slato United Methodist Church. And we are so glad that you are all with us in worship today. Y'all sounded really good. Y'all keep that up. And... We'll challenge the second service and see if they sing quite as well. And then I'll make a decision. I'll tell you next week which one was better. So you'll want to come back and hear that. Uh, I want to remind you before we enter our time of corporate prayer together that on the flip side of the announcements sheet that you had in the center of your bulletin, if you turn that over, you will have a list of people in our church community, our families and friends, um, those in our military serving who are in need of our prayer. We want to remind you of them so as we do our discipline of prayer throughout the week, that we will know who in our church family needs prayer and we want to pray for them. So if you would now, please pray with me as we pray together. Loving and almighty God, we are here today in the light of Easter, of the new day that it brings, with our hearts warmed by time with our family and friends and with our prayers and praises, we come before you today to pray for all of the needs of our world. In the light of Easter morning, we raise up those who are struggling this morning with illnesses, with despair, with the breakdown of relationships, with the breakdown of job security, with the breakdown of hope. May the light of Christ shine upon them this morning. In the light of Easter morning, we bring to you those places in our world where war, violence, poverty, and need are the experience of everyday life. Places like Gaza, places like Haiti, may the light of Christ shine upon them. In the light of Easter morning, we bring all of our pain, our private struggles, our heart's yearnings, our dreams that have not come true, our unfulfilled potential, May the light of Christ shine upon each of us this morning, that we may know that we are loved, that we may know that we have infinite value in the sight of God, and that nothing else is required but to live in his love. We pray for all of these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived and died and was raised again and who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able as we sing this Easter classic together, Up from the Grave, He Rose. <laughs> from the dark domain and he lives forever with his 
saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior, vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Rose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep its prey, Jesus my Savior. my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and the last forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Please be seated. And it is now time. Beth is going to tell you a tale. <laughs> I'm going to take this away. How are you? All right. Woo wee. I like this. Come on. All right. How cute. <laughs> wow, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, man. We have got, you want to sit down? You want to find a seat? Okay. Wow, this is just wonderful news. And I'm going to, oh, you know what? If you find a space, space right over there, look, she'll let you sit down, okay? All right. Well, happy Easter, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Um, let's talk about stories, okay? This when you know, we all like a good book sometimes, don't we? I brought one of my favorite books from when I was a kid. I like the three, the three little pigs. The three little pigs. Yes. I love that story. Yes, because I liked it when the at the very end when the, they defeat the big bad wolf and they live happily ever after. Isn't that a great, great, fun book? There's lots of good books, though. Some are even better than that one. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's another good story, and it is right in here. It's called the Bible, but there is a story about Easter in the Bible. Did y'all know that? I bet you knew that, yes. Okay, <clears throat> well, Today, it's, the Easter, it's Easter Sunday, and I want to talk to you about a different story. This story can be found in the Bible in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's the Easter story that tells about how Jesus died on the cross. And that story is still being written. Did you know that? The story's not done yet. I know. That's incredible. In fact, in this story... There's no ending because the Easter story is a story that's still being written, and the story invites us all to be a part of that story, okay? It's still unfolding. So everything you do and every decision you make, guess what? And I need a helper. Now, I only have 16 of these, so I want you all to share maybe with each other, okay? Because we're going to do, we're going to celebrate today, and these are just to help me celebrate. Miss Joanne, let me borrow these. So if you can take one and pass one back, and then if you can share with your neighbor, that would be so nice. You want to take some, Margaret? Okay. 
Whoops, whoop, uh-oh. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> it's raining pom-poms. Here you go. Y'all share with each other, and you have some right over here. Yes. Okay. Here you go. Oh, <laughs> got it. One more. Who wants one? Up. Oh, oh, okay. All right. I'm so glad you have those. Okay, hold them in front of you like this. Okay. Can you share with him too, and help? He can help you shake it some. You don't have to give it to him, but you can help him shake. Have him help you. Okay. Are y'all ready? Y'all are going to help me celebrate, because this story invites you <laughs> to the risen Christ in your everyday life. Shake your pom-poms. You are invited to live with hope, joy, and your neighbors and friends. You are invited to share compassion and love with strangers and enemies. <gasps> you are invited to show grace and generosity and, uh, to our families and to ourselves. You are invited to celebrate in our communities and the world. I want you to help me celebrate because look around you, everybody. You will find the risen Christ all around. Let's cheer for Salado and the people who we know and love. Let's cheer for the beloved people of God who we do not even know yet. Listen closely. Look around. Cheer for the risen Christ for communion when we take bread and juice yay and let's cheer for the christ has died christ is risen and christ will come again yay now look around again let's cheer because the risen christ is in the world from one side of the world all the way to the other yay let's cheer because the story continues okay everybody take your pom-poms and set them down nicely okay yeah, let's put it right in front of you, okay? All right. After We're going to say our prayer, but listen to me. After the prayer, I've got Easter eggs, okay? So we're going to have to make this quick so we can't sit here and just dig and dig and dig. I've got to make sure you all know to do it as quickly as possible, okay? All right. All right. Now, after I pray, I'm going to give you all an Easter egg. And then if you would return me your pom-poms, I'd appreciate it. If you really want it really, 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 really bad, Miss, Miss Joanne said you could have it. Okay, let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Dear God, oh, how we thank you for Jesus Christ. We celebrate the Easter story. We celebrate your love. And we celebrate the return of Jesus. Happy, Jesus, happy Easter, dear Lord above. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay. friends. My name is Scott Atnip and I'm UM Army's executive director. And I love serving with UM Army because I experienced a call to ministry when I attended my first mission trip in seventh grade. And I know the power, the transforming power that youth missions can have on young people, on communities, uh, and, and on the broader church as we equip young people with the opportunities to lead in worship, to build relationships with homeowners, and to share the love of Christ in real and powerful ways in communities throughout the United States. People, 
from so many different places came and I got to meet them and I got to hang out with them and I got to know them and it was just incredible and um, I truly think God put my church and these people in this exact place for a reason because I don't know, it was, an, it was an amazing experience. If you go in and just put your all into every aspect, worship, group, work, play, you just give it your all, all of that, it's going to be probably the best week of your summer. Mission trip before uh, you're, you're missing out. It is an incredible opportunity to draw closer to God. And if that's something that you want to get some of for yourself, uh, the deadline for this particular youth mission trip is coming up. And so uh, contact the office or, or Paul Corder, our youth director, and uh, let them know that you're interested in doing that. It is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And it's, it's made possible uh, in large part by our giving. Right, as a, as a church, we, we give so we can enjoy this kind of amazing worship experience, but also so that we can do stuff out in the world, contribute to God's kingdom, contribute to the creation of God's kingdom here on earth, as it is in heaven. So, if the as the uh, ushers come forward for the offering, uh, I'd ask that you join me in prayer. Loving God, Almighty God. You have blessed us tremendously, and we're here this morning to celebrate the greatest blessing of all, the blessing of your Son, Jesus, through whose life, death, and resurrection, we have eternal life. Loving God, we give you these uh, gifts this morning, our, our offering, as expressions of our thanksgiving and our praise, as expressions of, of how much we want to be like you, who gave it all for us. We ask this morning that you accept these gifts and that you multiply them, enabling us to build your kingdom here on earth just as it is in heaven. And we ask all of this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen.
be seated. Good morning. Happy Easter. My name is Beth Correa, and I will be reading from the book of John, chapter 20, 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two who were running together, but the other disciple outran at Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. The disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head of, and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went out and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Peter was set. He was the right-hand man of Jesus. And so when Jesus ascended to the Jewish throne, when he kicked the, the dirty, no-good Romans out of the Holy Land and took his place as the king, Peter was going to have it made. But then Jesus died. I mean, the, the one who could, who could heal blind people, the one who could bring people back to life, couldn't figure out how to avoid a few, a few priests, a few Romans, and it was actually almost like he didn't try. It was almost as if he wanted to die, or at least expected to die. I mean, Peter was totally confused. In fact, in his, in his confusion, in his despair, he actually denied Jesus three times. And he was scared, right? Because, because as Jesus is second in command, as his right-hand man, the authorities might well be coming after him next. And so when he heard that knock on the door, his first instinct was to like climb out a window. But then he heard the voice, it was a familiar voice, he opened the door and there's Mary Magdalene at the door just like babbling nonsense about how the body was gone, Jesus wasn't there. Now for Peter, this was an absolute disaster, right? Because as soon as those religious authorities heard that the body was gone, they were going to be coming after him. And so he ran as quick as he could to the, to the tomb, hoping against hope that Mary had been wrong, maybe it was too dark, maybe she couldn't see right. But when he got there, his worst fears were confirmed. The body was gone. But what he saw there was confusing, right? Because the body was gone, but the grave clothes were still there. The linens were still there. Like, who would take the time, if they're robbing a grave, to leave behind 
the linen. Why would they leave it behind? This was a mystery. But Peter, he didn't have time to solve mysteries. He had to get on, uh, he had more important things to do, right? Like look after himself, take care of himself, get himself good and hid. And so he left, went back home. Now John, he was heartbroken. His, his best friend in the whole world was dead. And it had all happened like in the blink of an eye. I mean, he could remember just a week earlier walking next to Jesus as he rode in to Jerusalem, people waving palm branches, laying their cloaks down on the ground, welcoming home, the coming king. And here he was, dead, just a few days later. And then there's this, this crazy story from Mary about, about how the body is gone. And, and as Mary's explaining this to him, something, it's like he remembers dimly something. Jesus said something about this, but, but he couldn't think about that. Then he had to get to the tomb to see if it was true. So he ran as fast as he could, hoping that he would find a body, fearing that he wouldn't. But again, what he saw wasn't at all what he expected. Because sure, the body was gone. Mary was right. But those linens, those grave clothes, they were there. And they weren't just there. They were exactly where they had been. It was as if Jesus just kind of disappeared. And then he, he remembered. He remembered that Jesus had said to them that he would die and in three days be raised up. And in that moment, John believed. No, he knew that his friend was still alive. But he didn't know what it meant. Yeah, Jesus was dead and, and now he's alive, but he didn't know what it meant for his own life. And so he went home to think about it. Now Mary, she'd gotten up early, before daylight, to go and finish anointing Jesus' body for burial. It was the least she could do, right? Jesus had been her Friend, he had been her teacher. He'd actually literally saved her from her demons. And so it was the least she could do to go and finish the burial preparations that had been cut short by the onset of Sabbath. But when she got there, the stone had been rolled away. Now, it was still a little bit too dark for her to see inside, but she just knew that the body was gone. She knew he wasn't there, and so she ran, and she got Peter, and she got John, and she followed them as they ran and confirmed, yes, indeed, the body was gone. But then they went home. And to tell the truth, she probably should have gone with them. I mean, there wasn't anything she could do. Jesus was gone. Someone had taken the body. But she was distraught. She was weeping, and, and she, she, she needed to understand why. What had happened here? And so she, too, looked into the tomb and saw something utterly amazing. She saw a couple of angels. And then, after talking a little bit with those angels, she heard a noise behind her. She turned around, and through her tears, she saw a man. And since she's there in a garden, she just assumes he's the gardener. Maybe the gardener took him. Maybe, maybe he knows where the body is. And so she asks him, just show me where he is. And then he says her name. And she suddenly knew that the gardener wasn't a gardener. There, standing right in front of her, is her friend, is her teacher, Jesus. He's there. He's alive. And so she reaches out to him, she, she, she calls out to him, and, and, he, and he stops her and he says, no, you got to let go of who you think I am, because I still have to ascend to be with my Father. And in that moment, she knew. She knew that this was her friend standing in front of her, but it was so much more. He wasn't just her friend, he wasn't just her teacher. He wasn't just the guy who had saved her from her demons. He was standing right there in front of her. 
He was alive and he was divine. God's son. The one who came to bring eternal life to the whole world. So in this story of the first Easter, we see a lot of different responses. We see, in fact, three different responses in those three disciples to the coming back of Jesus. And and we're also invited to consider our own faith. So how many of us have the faith of Peter, right? Maybe living in fear, maybe living in anger, maybe living in confusion at at what's going on in the world around us and in our own lives. We may know Jesus, we may even follow Jesus, but deep, deep down in our hearts, we know that while Jesus was a good man who brought a good message, an important message of healing and hope and forgiveness, to a world that desperately, desperately needed to hear that message. The message is all that's left. Jesus died. And so we just go home, get on with our lives. (coughs) Or how many of us have the faith of John, right? We may know Jesus. We may have befriended Jesus, And we are here this morning to celebrate the fact that, that while the world tried to kill him, it failed. Jesus lives. But we're still not quite sure what that means for our lives right here and right now. And so we go home to think about it. And how many of us, though, have the faith of Mary? right? She went to that tomb expecting to find a dead body, but instead she found new faith. How many of us maybe came here this morning expecting nothing but dead ritual, yet through this time together have experienced the living God, the risen Christ, How many of us have experienced our friend, our teacher, but even more than that, the Son of God, the one who came through his life, death, and resurrection to bring new, abundant, bountiful, eternal life, a new way of living into the world. So where are you in this story? And as you you ponder that question, remember, it's Easter. Easter is about hope. He is risen, and He is risen for a reason. A few minutes ago, we recited the Apostles' Creed. We've been through the entire season of Lent going through this creed and so we just this morning recited the end of it i believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting and when we say that we're not just saying that i believe jesus was resurrected we're not just saying that i believe jesus is enjoying eternal life right now what we're saying is That he came to make that life available for all of us. That we too will be resurrected and that we too will will be enabled to enjoy that, that love and hope and peace and joy. That new, new, new way of living. Not just way off in the future, but right now. As soon as we put our trust put our faith, put our belief in Jesus. Just as soon as we turn our hands and our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our whole beings over to Him to enjoy that new, bountiful life that He came to make available to us.
And that's what faith is. It's trust. It's trusting that our friend, Jesus, really does love us. It's trusting that our teacher, Jesus, when he said stuff like, you know, if you want to get into the, into the kingdom of God, all you got to do is love God with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself. That when he said stuff like that, he was right. He knew what he was talking about. It's trust that our Savior, Jesus, has lived, died, and been resurrected to enable us to enjoy new and eternal life. Now and forever. We are here this morning because we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Would you join me in prayer? Loving and almighty God, we praise you this morning. You have blessed us in so many different ways. You've blessed us with this creation. You've blessed us with your Son. You've blessed us with your self-revelation in your Word. But you have blessed us supremely in the gift of your Son, Jesus, who lived to show us what love and life really looks like, who died so that we might be reconnected with you, so that we might be able to, to enjoy new life in you and who was resurrected is a promise and a sign that this new life that he came to make available is available now and forevermore. God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you for the gift of your son, Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. So as we end our service and sing this last hymn, I invite anybody who'd like to join with us this morning in mission and ministry as part of this family of faith. Uh, You could come on up and uh, we could welcome you home right here and right now. Would you please stand as we sing together, crown him with many crowns, verses one through three. hear this benediction the good word and the good word for today is resurrection may you live as beth was saying a little while ago may you live a resurrection life may every morning be a new chance to live in the love and hope and peace and joy of jesus christ and may your life be changed so that others look in you and say i want to get me some of that 
May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the joy and communion of the Holy Spirit be yours today and tomorrow and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Sing together this last verse. Crown him the Lord of love. Behold his hands and side. Those wounds yet visible above. In beauty glorified. All hail, Redeemer, hail. For thou hast died for me. Happy Easter.